people deluded i'm back again good morning and i hope you're all doing well and safe saying that good morning good afternoon good evening and obviously good night depending on who you are wherever you are and obviously what time of day you're watching my videos um please make sure you hit the like button i appreciate that you're here or if you're here for the first time you know you've got to hit the subscribe button but where are we going now loan report time loan report business as you know i'm no expert i don't know players religiously i just love my football club and i like to see people progress i like to see for the under 23s that are out on loan i like to see you know their first steps in the professional game good and bad because you know a couple of players now a couple of themes as you would expect you know because of the dynamics of football, you look at people like Medley, Matt Smith, even Tyrese John Jules. They've had different managers at their clubs all while they've been out on loan. Sadly, a couple of players have suffered with injuries. Obviously, this is the real part of the game. And as much as I love these young players, you know, when they go off to these teams on loan, it's not that the the the, the, the fans that are accepting them on a temporary basis um don't recognize they're young, but they don't care. If you're a striker, are you scoring goals? If you're a defender, are you defending and keeping clean sheets? They don't really care about what you can be in the future. And football is real. And I, I think 23's football doesn't train you because someone like Medley will get on to you. So a couple of times. He's, he's played quite well on loan, I believe, at Gillingham and, and Kilmarnock now. But a couple of times he's made mistakes and it's led to goals. Under 23s, you get away with things like that. Sometimes our strikers might miss a chance and then the other team go up there and score. It's ruthless. And I do believe this is what develops you. And I do believe these are the sort, the, all of these footballers that are on loan now, they need to be making progress in a sense of they've not got a lack of self-awareness, you know, and being out of your comfort zone presents you with the opportunity to, you know, your level. If I'm a striker and I'm playing under 23s and I'm faster, stronger and technically above everybody, I'm going to believe I'm the best thing since sliced bread to an unnecessary standard because I'm bagging. Where if I try sat in that first team and that defender outstrengths me, outpaces me or tackles me, I have to use this upstairs. All these physical attributes and passing things, they can fade, they're incons they can be inconsistent. If you've got a brain, that's where your career is going, in it? So... You know me, I like these young players it developing and all of these sort of things. And if some are to come back and have a future at Arsenal Football Club, of course, I want to have, like I said, I'm no expert, but for me personally, as a fan, I want to have a rough idea as to where they're, what sort of level they're at, because I'm not a fan of false images and stuff like that. And I, I like to, you, you know, delve beyond and stuff. So let's get into it now, people. It's been a bit of a struggle this week. You know, a lot of the games ain't been televised. And as for Saliba, I've only watched the extended highlights, so I can't tell you everything you know if you want my general thoughts on his progress at nice then i'm pretty sure those of you who consistently watch my loan loan reports know where i stand with him you know he's got 12 11 12 appearances on the season now you know he's played what 90 minutes in all of them really and truly for me he's got confidence from playing confidence from feeling important he has to be a leader amongst other young men in that team and it is a bit of a tough watch watching Nice at times. I'm not going to lie. I like watching them because, you know, um, they've got Kahiri, who, who who obviously scored against Nimes as well very early into the game, got getting over his injury and showing that initial promise. And for me, for the next 12, 18 months, if he keeps developing, there might be something in there for Arsenal. Um, obviously, they've got a couple of other wonder kids. You know, we've been linked with Claude Maurice, who was formerly at Lorient now and obviously scored in this game as well. Um playing there you know they got Tadebo who's in a similar situation being a young center half who potentially some people say left France a bit too early and now found themselves back he's part of a center half partnership with Saliba so Saliba's doing quite well he's not going to come back the finished article what we want is him to get some more experience through playing games a bit more confidence you know he has shown that he's good on the ball um he has shown he's a good defender but there's several rough patches in his game that will need to be ironed out by Mikel Arteta and by Saliba and I think everybody can accept that you know he's going to be 20 years of age he's played what you know he still won't even touch 100 top flight career appearances at the end of this year so he is inexperienced and we do need to hold his hand to a bit but we just need him to come back a more developed and slightly more polished player and I think he will do that and one one has to wonder I'm keen to see because I look at it Mavropanos is doing well on loan and we'll get on to him. Saliba's doing well on loan. You've obviously got Gabriel's a bit older than them. So they're all three centre-halves at similar stages in their careers in that they're good and, and they will show moments where they, you know, they show their age and lack of experience, but they all kind of need development and they're all at similar ages. I'm keen to see on top of the obvious dynamics in the first team and the need for instant results, if we're going to do that. But against Nimes, based on what I saw people, you know, he did what he, he did what he could in, 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 in that performance for them. 
Um, you know, like I said, Amin Gariri and, and Claude Maurice did well. Um, again, he got 90 minutes. He continued his partnership with his fellow centre-half and young French international into Debo. Um, they took the lead, but they threw it away rather rather cheaply. And I mean, if you watch Nice, you do see a lot of cheap goals. Like, we're going to get on to the Monaco game, you know. They're a young defence. Communication in every, is everything. And their goalie makes a lot of mistakes as well. He's older than them. They're a bit calamitous. So you do see a lack of communication, a lack of following runners, just looking disjointed for nine times out of 10 when they concede goals. And I think that was reflected, people. Um, at 1-1, one, one, the, the one goal they did concede, I don't think it's directly his fault, but I did think both centre-halves, including him, reacted a bit slow. I think his poor play from their left-back. And I think they actually got caught moments before that higher up the field. So again, it's the sequences of play. Um, for me, Nice's niece defence don't look convincing and did not look convincing when they were dealing with crosses based on the footage I had available to me. But they won. Again, vital three points. They move forward. So against Nimes, as you lot can see, courtesy of what I found on the internet, I think the account was Ticker Tacker Connor, I believe. You know, all them Arsenal accounts do a good job of providing statistics. So it kind of backs up the eye test. I'm not one to read too much into statistics because instantly, you know, there was therefore more than one tackle from Saliba. So again, what, what do they class as a tackle in these sort of things? The people that, not the person who tweeted this, but the people that get the statistics together. But I think it paints a good picture for you lot. I know you lot like this so he played 90 minutes 94 touches had a pass accuracy of 95 percent we know he's a good passer on the ball we need to know if he's a good defender and i still think that he does track runners but there's a lot you know there's not glaring i wouldn't say concerns there's just obvious er areas in the young man's game that we can develop sometimes he gets too tight sometimes he's not tight enough knowing when to play knowing when to keep it simple always being proactive you know like i always say everybody will applaud someone making a last ditch slide tackle i would too because it looks amazing Amazing. No one's really going to applaud or see the guy that hasn't got into that situation because he's read that situation before it's even happened. You know, everyone will, will, will praise a firefighter for stopping a fire and saving lives. But what about that man who just walks past and sees a fire, a potential fire hazard or something that's going to spark in a house and he puts it to, to bed? Not the best example, but you get the point. The best defenders are proactive and that's what Saliba's needing to learn. Obviously, you can't really get there without experience. Um, as you look can see here, there's a bunch of other statistics as well. Made five interceptions, three blocks, three clearances. And again, he didn't concede any fouls. He had no errors leading to goals and he wasn't dribbled past in that regard. Um, so he's doing quite well. Now, a side note, people. Well, I'll get on to this, but a side note, you know, like I said, Gahiri and Claude Maurice are getting better and better each game. And surely, you know, Nisa got a couple decent little players here and there, and you'd imagine some can get moved. Um, I saw this also floating. I believe AFC Stuff tweeted this, but um, David Luiz, and there's the minutes played, and William Saliba, who's currently on loan, are the two outfield players with the most minutes played across Europe's top five leagues this season without being dribbled past once. Now, again, the... I wouldn't say, uh, you know, what what does dribbling pass? Because I've definitely seen somebody dribble at David Luiz and get away from get away from him and present a goal scoring opportunity, um, start a goal scoring opportunity. The same for Saliba. So these statistics, again, that would, you know, to most people, that would show you that, you know, nobody can dribble past him, which obviously statistics don't lie to a degree. But I'm not too sure in the validity of this people because I've still seen him have calamitous moments. But it is what it is. Like against it for their 2 0 defeat against Monaco in the cup, people a couple of days ago. Again, I only saw extended highlights and it was quite hard to do such. I was watching Champions League, but again, you know, looking at that, when you think of Monaco, they've got decent players. You know, I've told you a lot about Fufana in central midfield before. I've told you about, I can't say his name, but you all know the young centre mid that went from Bordeaux. They've obviously got Ces Fabricas, they've got Voland who scored, they've got jo um, jo Jovetic, I believe. So again, a game like this, I'm looking at Saliba and saying, yo, you're playing against players that have been around the block, you're playing a decent side in Monaco, putting a performance. And again, I just feel different from what I've seen again, I can't really comment, but from what I've seen, and, and for the record, you know, Denise's defence looked all over the place. They looked very reactive. They looked disjointed. Like I say, nine times out of ten, when I do these long reports, people, they're a very young and naive defence with a keeper that, for me, needs to open his mat. Um, a goal either side of, 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 of the halves, first and second half, respectively, was enough, people. Ultimately, I don't think Saliba was at fault for any of the goals, but again, very reactive. Like the goalie, there was one, one of the goals, Saliba's actually caught flat-footed and react slowly, but the goalie's just pamming it, you know, the sequence of play before that. It's going to be a tough season. I do think it's a season of promise for Saliba, but yeah, man, the last two games... 
haven't really been much success, really. Well, better success against Nimes, as you lot know. They won, um, and obviously they're out of the cup, so it is what it is in that regards. Now, Maitland Niles, first and foremost, congratulations to Maitland Niles, the 23 year old uh, against um, West Brom, I believe, actually. Uh, made his 100th career league appearance across the Premier League and the Championship. Now, I think that's one of importance because he's played 100 career games now and it's only now that we're kind of saying, yo, are you a centre midfielder? And there's still the talk of right-backs. That's not me criticising him. That's just me saying in terms of development, what do I always say to you lot? You need to make 100 appearances. Your first goal as a young footballer at 16 should be, whether it's at the club you are now or elsewhere, Where's the pathway? Where can I make 100 appearances or close and settle down roots? Um, in which Maitland Niles is great, you know, he's got a lot of appearances down him. But look at Bakayo Saka, he's made 76 or so for Arsenal alone. He will probably trump that. And for me, Maitland is he's of the age where he's always got to self reflect. You've made your 100th appearance now. Are you looking like that centre mid? You know, are you looking like that? Because again, you're going to return to Arsenal and we're going to have to run the rule over you. Um, generally, Maitland Niles is loan spell. I think he's doing all right at West Brom. I don't think he's standing out in a negative sense. I don't think he's standing out in a positive sense. I think he's just doing all right. I wouldn't say he's enhanced his reputation. He's forced the conversation to say he could be a midfielder here, but it is what it is. That being said, you know, I think the only thing glaringly obvious in his, in his game, beyond the obvious in terms of sometimes lack passing, You've got to be able to pick out a pass. That final third quality. I'm not saying he's ever going to be a midfielder that gets 10 goals, 10 assists, does the Bruno stuff. But there's been many occasions where he could have scored, could have assist and hasn't got his head up. That being said, though, I did feel against... Ev and I've said that all the time. I did feel, personally, he was very hard done by against Everton. Um, and because he, he put a lovely ball in from the right-hand side for their striker. Obviously, VAR and the linesman said, nah, you know, my man's toenail was offside. So, again, I've been very critical of Maitland now's his end product since he's gone on loan. He should have got an assist and he was robbed of it. It was the right decision. I did think he played relatively well against Everton, people. I think he pressed well with the other midfielders. They looked to press Everton high up the field and I I think Maitland was whatever Sam Allardyce has told him, he done quite well. Like I've said here, good, good pressing job with Gallagher. You want to see a bit more quality on the ball with Maitland now, but it is what it is. I did feel in the 71st minute, he made a vital tackle to deny Andre Gomez. Andre Gomez was, was in the trenches as well for what it's worth. I did feel he offered more in the final third in the second half, people. Um, and he was on the receiving end of a rather nasty tackle in the 76th minute. But generally, I think he did all right. I think he used his engine well. Now, that's good for Maitland. Again, he, you know, the team, the game, like Joel, who we're going to get onto, the game plan, all of that worked. Now you just want to see, you marry that, but also can you get a bit of quality? You don't want to be all gear, no idea. As much as I applaud that, you know, if we look at it on a cynical note, should you really play praise a midfielder in the Premier League for being able to press, being able to run around? That's that's just me looking at a balance thing. Do you get it? So he's he, he's definitely last two games. Maitland's taking up a slight level. Still needs to go up a couple of gears for me. He obviously got ninety minutes against Newcastle and against a fellow Loney and Joe Willock, who we're going to get onto. I feel Joe Willock played slightly better than him. I feel Joe had a good game really within the context of the Newcastle game plan because it looked quite poor. Um, um. Again, people, I did feel you, you know, you look at the you look at the end product people. Um, you know, ironically, both Joe Willock and Maitland now started against West Bromwich Albion in, well, played against West Bromwich Albion. Sorry, not to not say that's not meant to say started, played against West Bromwich Albion for Arsenal against um um against West Brom earlier in January. I'm sure Joe came off the bench and so did so did Maitland, or Maitland might have even started. I can't even remember, but they did. It's ironic how these things work. Um, I did feel in the 12th minute, once West Brom and Jalbion broke, um, broke up, they, they, had a, they had a chance to break. But once again, Maitland now his final ball was lacking. It was a big chance for them. I did feel he made a good tackle early on to deny his former Arsenal teammate currently, well, temporary former Arsenal teammate from advancing. I did feel he had a fairly decent game in the engine room again. Still not levels for the final ball. There was one moment for, for Phillips and there was one for Gallagher where, again, I'm not trying to be harsh, but he picks it out something could have been done. I can only comment on what I what I see, people, and I, 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 this is the realest, isn't it? This is what I'm seeing. M product needs to improve. You never got... I don't know if he's going to be a goal-scoring midfielder, but it's got to improve. Joe's done... I mean, Maitland's done all right in the last two games. I definitely think he's done He's done better than the, in terms of just me being able to see you in the game over 90 minutes Um, in the last two. Moving to Joe Willock, you know, I feel Joe had a... Within, the context of what Joe Willock is as a player in Newcastle, I think he had a really positive game. You know, he made one thing you, you know with Joe, 
you want to see a bit more quality on the ball, you know, what I th- I think he was kind of lacking in that, but you know what you're going to get with Joe. He's going to give you 110% effort. He was making those runs beyond the ball, beyond the last man. You know, he was trying to break, you know, he was trying to drive with the ball. I think Joe was a man on a mission to a degree. I don't think he played amazing, but I think he was, I think he played better than Maitland Niles in this. And I think he had a really good game. I think between him and Joe Linton in this nil-nil draw, I think they were probably... Newcastle's best players and if I'm Joe Willock I'd be quite annoyed with Matt Rich, not Matt Ritchie Ryan Fraser because there was one incident in the second half Joe Willock shot and it, it's nothing to do with him shooting it's Fraser's they've broken and the run Fraser's made he's brought West Bromwich Albion defenders into the path of Joe Willock if he took them away Joe could have had some time and could have would have should have doesn't mean anything but he might have been able to score um, I think early on he had a chance as well where Maitland denied him um, he played for me it looked like he was playing in that sort of unofficial 10 row in the first half he was quite advanced in that regard um, I, who did they bring on Newcastle changed things and it looked like he dropped more into a, into a traditional sort of central mid, midfield um who did they brought on someone? I think it might have been Gale and they changed things around and he dropped deep. Like I said, I think he started well. I think, you know, Fraser let him down and ruined it. You know, he could have had a, a I wouldn't say a, a, a tap in, but he could have had a better chance. I like how he kept trying and he made runs with or out the ball. He did force a good save from Johnson at a point. Um, he did make positive runs. Again, quality on the ball, dictating the tempo of the game, offering a bit more. I still am yet to see that with Joe. I know you run about a lot. I know you put in a shift, but it's all gear, all I- no idea. You know, it's all fun and games doing it for Newcastle with respect. We're going to be playing against low blocks at Arsenal, like against Burnley for the large period of that game. I need to see some quality on the ball. So he's making good runs. He's making good runs. He, you know, he was one of Newcastle's best performers, but I wouldn't say I've learned anything yet. From in, in that regard. Now, on to Mavropanos, people. He played Frankfurt and they drew 1 1. There was always going to be goals in this game between these two sides because there's night they, they, between them, they've scored 90 goals, I believe, recently. Um, well, that's what the commentator said when I was watching the game. So I don't know if that's true, but either way, that's what he said. Um, he's going against people like Andre Silva and things like that. So again, you know, you want to look at can my centre half come through this? And, you know, Mavropanos is doing quite well. You've heard Miss Lintat say they want to keep him on loan. He's got rookie of the year. You know, he's doing quite well. He's staying fit. He's playing well. He's up there for defensive stats, mainly in terms of the aerial threats. You know, I still think there's a lot of improvement to do. Sometimes he does get flat footed. Sometimes he could sniff danger out a bit more. Ball playing is all right. I'm not too sure if it's of the standard Arteta would would deem. He is cool in that regard. But I think he's all right, man. Um, I think he's doing all right. That being said, you know, he got 67, 68 minutes. That could be a concern. Again, you know, one thing I like about Stuttgart, they've really, they really understand the player they're getting in terms of the injury issues he's had. So that might be a reluctance to give him consistent minutes. Like I said, people, I might be overdoing this because beyond this, he's actually played 80 minutes and 80 odd minutes quite frequently. But of his 14 appearances this season, which is great because he's staying fit, 13 in the league, one in the cup, he's only completed 90 minutes three times. So is that something to look at? Is there still injury issues? I'm not too sure. Like I said, I think it's they're dealing with him good. But for me, if I'm Arteta, you've got to look at, can I get 90 minutes out of you? Because again, you have a sub man and things like that. Um, generally in that game, I think they did not hold on to the lead. You know, it was a poor goal to concede. You know, looking at it, it was. I, I really like how Mavropanos, he takes it personally. Like somebody has offended his mother when he concedes, and you can see him cussing in whatever whatever he's saying. You can see him cussing when they when they conceded. It was a poor sequence of play. I think, mate. Uh, you know, it was um, it was a poor le- sequence of sequence of play. You could see Mavropanos on the subs bench actually cussing and things, people, because I believe at that time he was gone. Um, you know, he was vexed. You could see it. You know, and I like that from him. He's got the mentality. He weren't on the field, I believe, for the goal they conceded because it came in injury time. I'm watching way too much football. I say injury time. It came latter stages. He could have been on. Admittedly, I cannot remember people, but I do remember him vividly being angry. That being said, you know, his passing was all right. He was good in the air. There was a couple of times his positioning made him get turned inside out. And I think one thing Mavropanos can improve is when he's forced into wide areas. But he's doing his thing, you know. There's default, whatever you say, the key thing you need to do as a young player is, is leave on loan and come back with an enhanced reputation for whatever reason. And I think Mavropanos is going to do that. You know, he's been nominated for Rookie of the Year. Like I said, the metrics, everyone makes a big a big song and dance of the metrics he's up there for, deservedly so. So Arsenal have a decision to make. Does he go on loan again to Stuttgart or whatever in the Bundesliga? Does he get in the Premier League? 
Does he stay next season? I think he deserves a chance to at least first couple of weeks at preseason show Arteta what he can do. But same way, I would like to see a decision made on him early to keep his development. Could he even be sold because of the increased value and reinvest? Who knows, people, you know? Like I said, he's staying fit. He's more, you know, he's staying fit. He's showing his defensive quality. You know, he's doing quite well. He still scores quite high for a lot of defensive positive statistics. So it is what it is. Um, I will be, well, at the time, of, by the time this video comes out, my live stream will be over, but I'll be kind of touching on this. Today, ironically, people, um, Miss Lintat spoke on Mavropanos and he said, he, hold on, people. He said, I need to be able to read this. So let me actually make sense of this. And actually, this is courtesy of The Athletic, which I'm subscribed to. He said, on Mavropanos, he said, he has all the hardware and all the software to be a great defender. He has been unfortunate. He's got a lot of injuries. A, a pubic bone inflammation kept him out um, more or less for one and a half years. The moment we thought he could we could play him, he tore his meniscus. It's important for us to get him fully matched. Fit. Maybe, that's, that's why I don't mind him not playing 90 minutes because it's nice to know, you know, that, they're looking after him and obviously probably more or less, you know, Miss Lintat probably knows Mavropanos that more about him than himself. He probably could tell him where his, where his birthmark is and them things there because he pursued him at Arsenal and whatnot. I wouldn't mind him staying on loan there again. I, I just sus one suspects, I think Miss Lintat sees a buck to be made in Mavropanos. Let's get him in permanently from Arsenal. He keeps playing. We sell him on. Um, you know, what I like from Mavropanos, you know, especially even when I was doing the little interviews with Arsenal players, they all say in training, the man's very good. You know, he look, I like him. He's strong. He's professional. You can tell he's he, he's, he's got the, a lot of the, the Greek, the positive Greek values that you attribute with a lot of Greek people. You know, humility, riding for your friends, bravery. He's got all of that. It's just about staying fit, proving you can do it at this level consistently. And then you have half a chance. As you can see, he went on to say, if he can stabilise physically, he's undoubtedly a Bundesliga level defender. He's one of the fastest centre-backs in the league alongside Oppo Meccano, a super guy, a model professional. You have to admire his, en his energy. All the strength it took to get over his injuries. We're super happy that he's been a regular in recent weeks. We would... Apologies, people. Scroll down. Like to keep him on loan for one more season if possible, but that will be down to Arsenal. That tells you everything. So again, Mavropanos is having a positive loan spell. You know, I think he's doing all he can to 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 get my end of season loan player of the year. You know, it was gonna, it was looking like it could be Matt Smith right now. The chart on one, not through no fault of his own, it's looking a bit iffy. Ballard's doing his thing. Gwendozi was having a positive loan spell and, and so far, you know, he's not in the team. He got 45 minutes. You know, Kadira, you know, Kadira was injured and he was unfortunate because he could have played against his brother in their recent, in, in Hertha Berlin's recent game, people. Um, but yeah, Gwendozi got 45, got 45 minutes. He's still on the bench when people are injured. Um, he did come off the bench and help them turn the game around of such people. But you've got to wonder... You know why is he, why isn't he cho why isn't he been chosen? I know the manager's spoken a lot about his attitude and things. You know it was a big it was a big comeback for them, courtesy of Piontek. I think he scored the winner. You know big three points. They're battling to stay in the division. You know I did feel in the minutes he had, he put himself around. You know he part of a good collective performance to turn the game around. But I wouldn't say he did anything amazing. What I would look at though is the fact is he's made 19 appearances for the season. And I personally believe at Arsenal, we need this man's Aries fire back. You know, a lot of it makes sense when you look. I'm not one for the star signs in that, but Gwendozi's quite rowdy. He's born a day after me in April. So it all kind of makes sense, people. We, we've seen a lot of rumors, you know, missing to ironically has questioned Arteta even loaning him out, really, um, as well. But it is what it is. He's made 19 appearances. For him, he's regressed in terms of squad uh, in squad importance. You know, under one manager, he's playing week in, week out. This new manager ain't really feeling you. So you've got to earn his trust. What I would say is he got 45 minutes this week versus previous weeks. And it depends how you look at it. Because last week, he got 37. The week prior, he got 22. And now he's got 45. So it's gone up week in, week out. So on one hand, could you say... Without other dynamics at play, he's bit by bit earning the trust of his manager. Or would you say he's little more than an impact player would have to see? I'm not too sure if a move will be made permanent now because of Dardai, but we'll have to see. Now, Daniel Ballard, you know, he's doing what he needs to do across the last two game weeks. He's played for Blackpool. They drew 1-1 against Wimbledon. I did feel in that game he had a couple dodgy moments, but another good game from him. I think he was good in the air. I think, think he was composed as he ever is, as you know what you're getting with Ballard. A couple of times, I think he lost his man too easily. I thought, um, I thought he gave as good as he got, you know, in terms of 
a certain dominance. You know, sometimes he got beaten, the striker would beat him. Sometimes he would beat the striker. I think he did what he needed to do. They conceded quite late as well, people. And for those of you that care about other low, low knees, they took the lead through Ellis Sims, Blackpool, that is early on, but it wasn't to, to be done. Yesterday, they played against MK Dons. And, you know, of the five recent starts Ballard has made, he's been helping Blackpool keep three clean sheets. Now, I, I, I saw this before. I was looking at the league table before they actually played MK Dons, so I'm not too sure. But I do believe this now should be no, no defeat in their last six games after playing MK Dons. And they were 12th in the league. So that, that could all change. Um, I did feel against MK Dons, he made vital blocks um, on occasion in the game. He got another 90 minutes. I did think he gave away possession a bit cheaply with the ball when he in the, in the rare occasion. So Daniel Ballard's doing what he can to enhance his reputation. And between Ballard, McGuinness, Medley, I don't know what the landscape is going to be because there's a bag of centre-halves on the books at Arsenal, but they're doing all they can, you know, Ballard especially. And for me, I'm happy because... I think he could have made real, real progress and kicked on just as a professional footballer if he wasn't robbed of a season with injury. As you lot remember last year, he went Swindon and he and he got hurt sadly. Now, for what it's worth, Clark is sadly still injured, so he made no appearance for Oldham across their games against Southend and against Port Vale, both nil nils. Um, side note, though, people, when he does return, and this is what I mean by you know, going on loan helps you because there's new managers, you have to earn trust, all different things are happening. You know, there's a new manager. The next time he plays, I'm sure he's met his new manager, but they've got the experienced Keith Curl. He's replaced Harry Quell, um, Kirill, I can't say his name, Harry Quell. You all know who I'm talking about, the former Liverpool and Leeds man who's now a manager. You know me, I can't pronounce names, people, but his new manager's Keith is what it is. Now, Medley, you know, bound. To, I, I would love to, it, Medley. If you're watching, we gotta get an interview done at the end of the season because I would love to hear his experience. You know, man's gone from League One, Gillingham. I think he's from that neck of the woods all the way to Scotland. I have to admire it. After and someone like Medley for years, I've said you need to go on loan. You know, you these young centre halves, you need to be put in environments where you're playing people faster and stronger, and and where you have to always think. That luxury isn't always afforded, in my opinion, at under 23s. So moving away from that, you know, they lost against three, they lost three two against Ross County. I'm not gonna lie, people. At the time, well, saying that Celtic versus who did Celtic play? Because they, they didn't get a result and Rangers won the league. But when I was watching the game, people, it, it was billed as the game of the day in Scotland. Like I said, I'm not watching Scottish football frequently to know that um they took the lead and they messed up and like you can see here they're fighting for relegation because they're bottom of the league and i like it for medley because again he's got to prove his trust now because you can imagine that squad is fractured now they might be looking at medley and saying well i don't know if you're committed because you're you're effing back off to arsenal at the end of the year and, and medley probably be saying listen you lot ain't you lot don't care because you're not doing things so it, i'm keen i love seeing people in them situations because now man are seeing how real football is people are fighting to stay in the division people are fighting for their livelihoods people are really playing for their pride it's not pretty anymore and for a center half i think they're the ones that got to learn that i'm not gonna lie though i think the whole team kilmarnock's whole team was terrible you know i got a lot of time for medley i did feel you know when you're in a dog fight, you can't allow these three goals collectively. At least two of the goals, not Medley alone, but he could have done better. At least one of those, I would say Medley directly has to do a lot better. He's the complete wrong side of the of the man and he's been twisted up really and truly. But the whole team, I can't lie, people, the whole team, Kilmarnock, they're all as bad as each other in that game. You know, it was terrible defending. The whole team was all over the place. Centre halves are not aware, fullbacks are nowhere to be seen. Midfielders are at sixes and sevens, you know. I would be ashamed of what I saw if I was a if I was a Kilmarnock fan. I think the second goal, like I said, he could have done better, but everybody was equally as bad. Fundamentally, now people, he's in a relegation battle. Everyone needs to pull their pants up and fight for their status in the league. And he's gonna need to prove that he can start week in, week out. Like I said, you know, very same incidences like this game, Ross is Ross County against Kilmarnock, but this could have been, I don't know. Arsenal against Everton on the 23s level. And yeah, you might feel you messed up and stuff, but you don't admit the next day it's out of your head. Their man there are always, they're trying to fight to stay in the league. There's not, you you immediately know the results and the implement implications of messing about. So in his 64 minutes, there was a lot for him to learn people. Fundamentally, for Medley and the rest of them, when you're in a dogfight, you can't allow them sort of goals there because that's not how you stay in the division. 
I think Mark McGuinness is injured, so I don't think he's been involved in any of the games against Gillingham and Lincoln Town. My guy, Matt Smith, he got 77 minutes against Oxford. He looked fairly decent on the ball um, and nothing of note really and truly, but he looked all right. Um, I'm pretty sure Charlton had a penalty and missed that late on. I could be wrong. Again, it, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, nine minutes. He got nine minutes yesterday against Northampton Town, so really there's nothing to speak on. Ben Shafe, he only came on the field for a minute. He really... would. You know, he played a minute against Derby. It's a good result for Coventry. They're near each other in the table. Um, he was a late that sub. He played no minutes to show anything he could do. And it, it is what it is. You know, Oli Inka, he weren't involved against Tranmere and Oldham because obviously the man is injured. Or say 2-2, two, two, well, you can't play against Cardiff. But in his last game for Cardiff, I didn't see I didn't see him involved. Um, so I can't really comment. So I think that's that in that regard. You know, Olewu, I couldn't find anything of, 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 of note. Um, if I had to get if I who if I if I had to say I think played the best this week, I would give it probably to Ballard. To be fair with you, I think Ballard's done well in the last couple of games I've seen him play. I think Ballard's my lonely of the week. Um, mixed success as you lot can see, but you know they're all developing. And for me, whether it's gone good, whether it's gone bad, and I'm pretty sure those of you that have been following my loan reports religiously, some man started off very good, then it went down the toilet. Some man have started slow and went good. I'm not critiquing them because I, I love this because this is how this is what football is. Either way, all of you are going to return. Better players are more self-aware, and I think it's a waste of a season if they spent it at 23's level. Um, Obviously, you know, for me, I can't wait till Tyrese John Jules is fully fit. Would love to keep saying it. Want to be speaking about Tyrese John Jules in these loan reports. And I have seen the pictures on his Instagram. He looks like he's getting fit again and training at Arsenal and things. So hopefully he can have a season to remember in what's left people. But in relation to my loan report, that's all I've got to say on these players, you know. Like I said, I'm never going to pretend to be no expert. I'm just a man who loves football. And I know a lot of you love it as well. So if I've provided you with some value, I appreciate that you think that way. Please hit the like button. On that note, though, please hit the like button, subscribe and the rest. Deluded, I'm out.